اصلا میخوام هر چی Okay, uh, good evening, everybody. Shalom aleichem. It's a uh, it's an auspicious night to be a Jew in um, in America. Um, to really things in so many different ways. This Shabbos and this weekend are coming full circle. Uh, it's full circle for us because we are finishing the entire book of Bereishis. The entire, really, I think it's like two thousand years of Jewish history already encompass the totality of Sefer Bereshis. It is full circle for you know us in a certain way that it tonight marks the end of a very difficult and devastating year for each and every one of us. Our lives were literally turned upside down um, in so many different ways and we still continue to be reeling and feeling the side effects of this devastating pandemic. But in a in a microscopic way, if you hone in on one aspect of Bereshis, we're also coming full circle with a saga and a drama of the story of Yosef and the brothers. That also comes to a seemingly end at the end of Bereshis. It began several weeks ago. It really could make a really good drama. On uh, no one's ever really picked it up. It could have made a good drama. It's so good. It's excellent. It's riveting. There's political intrigue. There's backstabbing. There's so many different aspects of it, and really, this it's so it pulls at our heartstrings when we read it each and every year, trying to find new insights into this story itself, and trying to you know glean from it what we can learn for our own lives. So I'd like to focus now and take you to the end of Vayechi, you know, and Yosef at the end of Vayechi has a request. He has one simple request. He says he wants to, just like his father and just like his grandfather and great-grandfather, he wants to be buried in Eretz Yisrael. More than anything else, he wants to be buried in Eretz Yisrael. So if you needed to think of somebody that Yosef should ask to bury him in Israel, who should Yosef ask? Who would have the political power, the political clout and strength and wherewithal to do this? So many of the Mepharshim have already expressed that Yaakov's sons, Menashe and Ephraim, and Menashe was more like this, had the political power to get this done. It would be obvious that Yosef would be considered somebody who they didn't want to, you know, Yosef was a, a child of Egypt. Why would they want to take his bones at Baron Rothschild? They say the story of a Baron Rothschild that he died in France and they wanted to bury, he wanted to be buried near Israel. The prime minister, I think de Gaulle was the prime minister at the time, didn't want him to be buried in Eretz Israel. In Eretz Israel. He said he is a French citizen, first and foremost. So you can imagine that when Yosef died, Paro said, he's, a, he's an Egyptian. So he would need some power, some clout to get this done. And you would think that the person that would get this done would be Menashe or maybe even Ephraim were the two of them together. Yet... The Torah says very, very clearly, this is the second to last Pasuk in all of Sefer Bereshis. Vayashba Yosef as b'nei Yisrael emor. Yosef adjured his two, his, not his two brothers, his two sons, but he brought in his, his brothers. And he said to his brothers, pakod yifkod elukim eschem, one day God's going to take us out of Egypt. He's going to take us out of this wretched place. Vaalisem et asmosayim izeh. And I want him, I want you guys to take my bones out of Egypt. I want you. And it's very, very strange. Why would Yosef ask the brothers to take him out of Egypt and not his sons? On two levels. They're his sons. They have the responsibility. That's what Yaakov did to Yosef. Yaakov asked his son, Yosef, to do it. And secondly, they would have the wherewithal to do this. So Rabbi Soloveitchik makes a very very important comment here about, not just about this story, but about restoring relationships and bringing relationships back to full circle. He says, it's true that if Yosef was simply looking for somebody to make sure that his body would return to Eretz Israel, he should have asked his own children, but that wasn't his main goal. Because if we take a step back and we look at what was going on between Yosef and the brothers, it's not so clear 
whether they reconciled. See, when Yaakov dies, or when a patriarch or a matriarch of a family passes away, the family is very connected. The family stays connected through the, through the death, through the funeral, and through the shiva. And sometimes it's that elderly grandparent that keeps the, the children and the grandchildren connected. We need to go to the Hanukkah parties because grandpa's going to be there. We need to make it to the Pesach Seder at this house. The family's going to stay connected because Bubby is going to be there. We all need, and that person becomes the connector of everybody together. What happens when that person dies? What happens when that person passes away? So right here, right after Yaakov passes away, the brothers look at each other and they say to Yosef, right before Abba died, he told us to tell you that you should take care of us. You should take care of us and we are here. And, and, there, and Yosef starts crying. Yosef says, your father never told us this. You know, Abba said to forgive us and you should, you know, you should have Rahmanas on us and take care of us in Egypt. And Yosef understood, Yosef understood that the brothers were afraid. The brothers were afraid that Yosef was going to take revenge on them. Yosef understood that there was no connection here, that they felt Yosef didn't, didn't forgive them and there was some distrust in this relationship still. So Yosef begins to cry. And he tells them, Al-tira'u, don't be afraid. Anochi achakel I'm going to take care of you, you, your children. And he speaks to their hearts. And, and that's the way it is. But Yosef realizes, you know, that sometimes that's not really enough. You know, it's not really enough. How do you bring a relationship back when there's so much strife and so much, you know, anger that happens between two parties. How, how can you ever reconcile that? A husband and wife go astray. Parents and children don't talk to each other for years. There was a, something happened, something, uh, bad decisions, poor decisions were made. How do you rectify? Is it just enough to show face? It's definitely a first level. Is it just enough to break bread together? It's very important. But where do you get to the moment when things really come back and they change? So Rabbi Salavechik says, it's with these final words of Yosef. See, Yosef says, I am entrusting you with the most important thing that I have left. I'm done, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna pass away very, very shortly. The most valuable thing that I have right now is that I want to be buried in Eretz Israel. It's more valuable to me than anything else. And I am entrusting you with that. I am entrusting you, my brothers, with that responsibility. Technically, it's not your responsibility. Technically, it's your son. It's my son's responsibility, but I'm giving it to you. Because you know why? In order to really rectify your relationship that has been burnt, people have been burnt, and people have been broken, and torn apart, how do you rectify that relationship? It's through trust. It's through proving that you trust that individual again. And if you could prove that you trust that individual, then there could be a full, complete restoration of the relationship. Think about the Isha Sota and that whole story of infidelity or possible theoretical infidelity that went on. There was a major distrust that went on in that, in, that, in that episode between husband and wife, the Torah needs to go, the halacha needs to go through an extreme situation to prove one thing, trust. A marriage is based on bias ne'eman bisrael, it's based on trust. That is something that once it's lost is so, so difficult to bring back. It is so hard to bring back. And it is dafka through this ability. And that's what Yosef is doing at the end of his life. He is bringing back the trust that was lost many, many years before this. What's amazing about this is that there are two major aggressors 
on Yosef's life throughout. All of the brothers had a very difficult time with him. And they all gave him a hard time, except for Binyamin. But there were two, two that were the most difficult, and that was Shimon and Levi. And what's amazing is, is that who eventually takes Yosef's bones out of Egypt? Who eventually bears responsibility to bury Yosef? Who is it? It's Moshe Rabbeinu. It's Moshe Rabbeinu. And it's not by accident. It's not just that Moshe Rabbeinu was the leader of Kali Yisrael. It wasn't that he was trying to model what the right thing was to do was. No. Moshe was a great grandchild of Levi. Of Levi himself. Levi was an aggressor against Yosef. Levi was one of two boys to push Yosef into the pit himself. So with Levi coming full circle, literally hundreds of years later, to show that we are reunited, that we are reunited. And the Rev writes, the most difficult part about this whole thing is that when you put trust in something, somebody, you're taking a risk. You're becoming vulnerable. You're showing your vulnerability. Because it's risk. I, I don't know. Is that person going to actually, you know, fulfill that trust? Are they going to be trustworthy? Are they going to then give me something and show my show trust to me the same way? Somebody's got to give at a certain point. Otherwise, the relationship is done and it's over. Yosef took that first step, which is so difficult to do in a relationship. And he said, I not only forgive you. I am going to be vulnerable at this point. I'm going to sh- take a risk and ask you to do something. I don't know whether you're going to, you know, you know, do it back to me, if that's going to happen, if that's not going to happen. But I know that if we want to rectify this for history, for posterity, then that's what needs to get done. So many relationships are broken. So many relationships can't get past this particular moment. They can maybe get together, they could save face, they could say hello to each other, they could be cordial, they can maybe even have a meal together with other people around. But this breach of trust is something to, that restores and repairs the relationship itself. And it is every marriage therapist, right, will tell their clients that the key to building or rebuilding a marriage is being willing to take risks, to trust in each other, rather than questioning the other person's motives. Parenting experts will tell you that children need to see that their parents trust them. And that's a risk. And that means sometimes that children are going to make mistakes or make choices that parents aren't going to be happy with. But at the end of the day, that is a parent's job. A parent's job is to loosen that leash, so to speak, proverbial, throughout life. As they get older and older, create a relationship that's built not on do what I say, but on trust. I hope that I gave you the tools and the toolbox to make the right decisions in life. That's what Abba and I, Mima, Ima and I have, have given you. And that's really what Yosef is instructing and educating all of us. See, this story of Yosef and the brothers wasn't just written down to learn about Yosef and the brothers, but it's really about us. You know, so many relationships have been destroyed and lost during this past year. We talk about the loss of life a lot. And we talk about the loss of um, simple functions and people that have, are ill and are still feeling the effects of corona or other illnesses. But something that has been lost also is relationships. So many people are broken. So many people as a result of you're doing this and you're doing that and so many different, and it's, and it's hard because we're all at some type of level of angst and anger and frustration on, on some level with where we are. And that creates breaches in relationships. And that create, and what's going to happen after? What's going to, whenever that time is, Bezrat Hashem very, very soon and the government's going to step it up with the, with the vaccinations. What's going to happen afterwards? What's going to happen to those relationships? that we could bring back with people that are actually here. Are we going to take that step ourselves? Are we going to learn from Yosef to, to be that person, to take that risk, to be vulnerable? Or are you just going to stand in the sidelines and say, ah, uh-uh, he started it. She started it. I'm going to wait for them. Sometimes, and people are people and they're human 
and we're human beings and we're all, we're all infallible. We're all fallible. We all make mistakes. And sometimes they don't reciprocate and sometimes it, it, it's, it, it's irreparable. But at least we have to try. And that's what Yosef tells us. At the, this is the last tube sukkim in all of Sefer Bracious is telling us when it comes to the race, relationships, we have to try. We have to take that step in. We have to lean in, as many would say these days, we have to lean in to that vulnerability and show that we could trust that other person and try as hard as it might be. And that Bezrat Hashem will lead us to have much more and many more fulfilling and meaningful relationships in our lives. Good job.